The IQ square power meter. Well, where do I even start with this? I'll assume a lot of people are already up to speed with the history behind IQ squared. If not, hold on tight. First up, their Kickstarter for a new cycling power meter launched on the 24th of April 2018. They were fully funded within eight hours. That eight hours is the only thing that I would call rapid when talking about IQ squared. The initial backer delivery date was September 2018. That didn't happen. In early May 2019, they decided to switch the design of the power meter from a pedal plug over to a full pedal-based unit with the options of road and mountain bike. So from there, enter a whole new set of delays. And here we are in June 2020, where they say they are shipping limited supply to backers and the website is still taking pre-orders. Now onto my position with IQ squared and the whole scheme of things. I'm not a backer. It's not a risk that I was willing to take at the time. A power meter from a company who hadn't made one before that was unseen, untested, too risky for me. However, IQ squared were throwing around my brand name GP Llama in a number of updates, assuring backers that I would have one to test in a Llama lab to let you know about the results. So they had my attention. Now I think how the IQ squared story has unfolded has become the attention grabber of all this. And that's what people are talking about because the power meter itself there's nothing special. There's nothing to write home about. And you'll see the tech specs in a moment. Now, I do appreciate a number of backers are angry. Some are very angry for a number of reasons. The design change from a pedal plug to a pedal, uh, the delays and the communication on those delays, titanium versus steel. There's a number of reasons. But just remember, I have no horse in this race. I'm not a backer. I'm simply somebody who tests a lot of power meters. And I've got a pretty good grip on what works, what doesn't, and everything in between. Now, before I dig into the details, I'd appreciate if you could hit that subscribe button here on the GP Llama YouTube channel. It helps things keep ticking along, helps me keep testing power meters, and it's gonna take you less time than you've been waiting for any info from IQ squared. Okay, here we are, the tech specs of what I've been sent to test in the Llama lab. It's an IQ squared road pedal, single-sided left. Power range between zero and 2600 watts, so I don't think I'll be hitting that anytime soon. Uh, power accuracy plus or minus 1%, cadence range between 10 and 200 RPM. The sample frequency is listed as 2000 samples per second. Now that should allow them to do things like oval chainring support and cycling dynamics, two things which it doesn't support out of the box at this point in time. They list here full continuous temperature compensation, so ATC, so that's a good thing if you're in environments with wild swings in the weather. Uh, and plus and Bluetooth smart support, so compatible with everything. A 2032 lithium coin cell battery with up to 140 hours life, per battery, uh, not rechargeable. Uh, the Q factor is 55 mil, which is pretty good considering the original pedal plugs were going to be plus 16 mil each side. Q factor was a big debate with the original design. 55 mil Q factor for a pedal, that's pretty much ballpark for any power meter pedal out there. The weight, 189 grams, single sided, including battery, that is claimed. We will test that in a moment. Temperature range, negative 10 to plus 50 degrees Celsius. IP54 standard, maximum rider weight 120 kilos, warranty two years, and the price for the single-sided road power meter, 199 euro. To be completely honest, there's nothing there that really stands out on the spec sheet that grabs my attention other than the price tag. There's other power meter pedals out there on the market already that are easier to install, they're lighter, and they come with everything in the box already. Now, speaking of what comes in the box, or more specifically, what doesn't come in the box, cleats. Now you'll need to supply your own Look Keo compatible cleats for the IQ squared pedals. They'll come in at around $30 Australian, maybe $20 US or so, so it's an additional cost. And not all Look Keo compatible cleats are compatible. The Favero P1 and P2 cleats do not work with the IQ squared pedals. I found out the hard way I had to use the Vector 3 cleats that I had. IQ Square do tell me that the Look Keo grip cleats will also work, but it was just handy that I had the other ones on hand. I have ordered the Look Keo grip cleats to test out with these pedals, but as a side note, there's an additional cost to buying these pedals. You've got to buy your own cleats and the right ones at that. Now, what has been supplied to test? A single-sided road pedal power meter. Now, this is what IQ Squared say is representative of a production unit, but look, until we see these in the hands of backers to confirm, we really don't know. What I'm calling this is a representation of what IQ Squared can deliver. And as such, I'll be keeping a very close eye on what backers do end up getting and their experiences they report. Okay, the day has arrived, IQ Squared power meter. Now what we have here is one of the first produced models from them, which is the left only pedal based power meter for road. And there's a lot of people keen to see these, to see if they exist, and yes, they do. And secondly, to see if they work. So let's jump into the box and have a look at what they're all about. 
Okay, so single-sided, so we have a dummy pedal this side. And a left only is the power meter. Okay, pedals there for now. We have two batteries supplied. We have pedal washers if required and an installation tool, which is upside down back the front. There we go, IQ squared, which acts as the install tool and also the alignment tool. And you'll see that in action in just a few moments. But I guess you're wondering what these things weigh in at. But before weighing the unit, we will put a battery in because we want to weigh them with battery installed. Okay, so end cap here is plastic. I'm a little concerned with that. If people are going to be tightening these up a lot, that there could cause a problem that could uh, strip out pretty easily and the threads on there are also plastic. Let's see how they go out in the field, but battery first. I believe we only need one and that will be minus side down based on every other battery I've ever put in before. I'm assuming it needs just the one. Oh. So I guess that keeps the battery in place there. That's magnetic. Let's see that in action again. I was expecting to put it in like that, but boom. So we line it up there. Finger tight for now. And a five mil Allen key here. And again, I am concerned with that being plastic, but uh, not too tight, I think is the answer there. Okay, battery is in. Obviously we don't need a battery on this up, but I am keen to see what's inside this dummy side. Nothing, that doesn't even turn. Now that is interesting. Why even put that hex there? And you saw how easy it was for me to click through and, oh, okay. Anyway, uh, don't try and change the battery in a pedal that isn't a power meter. I just wanted to test that out anyway, but that's... Okay, cool. Uh, spare battery. Awesome stuff. Now the claimed weight of these initially was 175 grams per pedal. That was when they first switched over to pedal-based power meters from the pedal plug they originally had as the Kickstarter. Over on the website iqsquared.com, they do list 189 as the current weight, each pedal. Let's put that to the test. Now that's the non-power meter pedal. This is the power meter pedal with a battery in it. 180, 201. And 204. And together, 405. There we go. To put that into perspective with the other power meter pedals that are out there, single-sided PowerTap P1, 217 grams for one pedal. PowerTap P2, 202 grams. Vector 3, 162 for one side. Exact, 156. For Vero Asioma, 149 as measured in the Llama Lab. And as a reference point there, the Shimano Durace PD9000 non-power meter pedal comes in at 125 grams. So here's where the IQ square sits in the whole scheme of things at the moment. The next thing I'm keen to know is the stack height. So center spindle to the top of the platform here. As a reference over here, we have the Shimano Durace pedals at 10.5 mil. Power taps, they're quite high at 14.35 measured in the Llama Lab. Vector 3s, 12 mil. Ceram Exact, about 12 mil. And the Favero Asioma. Now they're listed as 10.5, but in the Llama Lab they measured at 11.3 millimeters stack height. So let's pull this out and have a, a rough estimate of what we think this is going to be here. Let's go for 12.5 millimeters as a stack height. So not too far off the Garmin Vector 3s, but still a lot skinnier in that direction than the power tap pedals. The Q factor listed on the website from the spindle to the center pedal is 55 mil. I think that's gonna be pretty close. To... That can't be too far off there. So very standard for this kind of pedal. Whilst IQ Squared provide this tool for half the installation, you still need to supply, as you saw before, the 5 mil hex key for the installation of the batteries and ideally a torque wrench 
to get the pedals installed as per their specifications. Now what that is, is between 20 and 25 Newton meters on this little bolt here, which is a six mil hex, once it goes on the crank. And finally, a quick bearing test before we put them on the bike. And they're not too stiff, it does weight down. I guess this side's probably better, so when you're clipping in, you can hit it with a cleat and clip in. Okay, over here for the on-bike installation, after testing this on the Stages bike already. Now, like you squared, do have a how-to video that I would highly recommend viewing over on their YouTube channel. This is me completing the task after watching that YouTube tutorial. So not quite a how-to, but I'll take you through the process of uh, me installing the pedal here. So the thread goes on in this direction here, but not too tight. You do have to back it off and make sure the IQ squared logo is pointing upwards when the crank is in the nine o'clock position that you're seeing here. Pulling out the 16 mil tool, not the 15 mil tool. 16 mil doesn't really matter which way it goes. And that's the alignment tool to make sure everything is correct. The inside nut is then tightened down enough for me to then pull out the torque wrench. Just getting it in place here before pulling out the big gun. Alignment tool back in place and held tightly. And the torque wrench, yeah, I agree. It's a bit of a process there, Max. And we're done. Good to go. So not as easy as the other pedals to put on, but once it's in place, should be good to go. Under the configuration of this power meter with their app, we'll pull up the IQ squared configuration util. Uh, hi there. Nice greeting. Bike name. Okay, we'll go for Lammy Bike. All good. Uh, yes, it will be over Bluetooth for this configuration. It's found the pedal. Happy days. That's a good sign. Next, the crank length is set within this utility, not within your head unit. I'll type in my name, email, and password. Once that's all stored, let's pull up. Uh, okay, you can send me notifications if you like, but here we go. All the details, we have firmware, we have crank length, we have gain, so we can scale the unit if required, and we have a zero offset function. So we'll tap on zero offset on first install and see what it comes back with. Yes, the bike is stable and upright. Okay on that. Coming back with a negative 34 value. We'll try once again to see if it changes. Negative 35. For the best results, it's always good to do a few short sprints prior to collecting all the data. So here we are out with our friends doing just that. Everyone knows this by now, my favorite website on the internet, the DCR Analyzer Tool, where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay and see how things stack up. Boom, straight into the Llama Lab test with the IQ squared power meter pedal. Now this is up against the Stages bike, which has a full left, right, independent Stages Gen 3 unit on it that's not Shimano and has been showing some really, really good numbers up against the Asioma Duos. So I do trust the Stages bike at this point in time. It's also a sneak peek at how it operates with the Llama Lab test. Okay, so once installed, everything's good to go, and off we kick. 226, 223, looking pretty good. That's with no smoothing whatsoever. But you can see there, there's probably a three watt difference. So given the Stages bike is a true left, right, if I scroll down, have a look at the breakout from left, right power, we should see the left be a little lower, right a little higher, and that will explain the differences there. I've got a couple of watts scrolling down, 112 versus 114, I'm a little lower on the left, given it's a dual-sided system, it'll double the left, which is a little bit lower again. Um, look, happy days, that's close enough, well within spec. That's all good, looking at the sprint here, all looking pretty good. Uh, the peak is one second off, but I've got no hassles with that at all. Uh, that could be the data recording, etc. but they all are within a few watts there. Happy days, and the overs and unders, part of the Llama Lab test, 
we have 260 versus 262. Bit of a spike on the IQ squared, and I'll talk about that on the fourth data set. Not a rabbit hole, just a lot of data to go through quickly, but there is a bit of a spike at the start as the power meter wakes up or gets the initial kick of any effort. Um, again, all looking pretty good, and we have a simple little acceleration test through here. Hard effort, 278, 277 at around 450 watts or so. Look, I've got no problems at all with the Llama Lab test with that. Next up was the Aussie Hump Day ride happening on a Wednesday. Pretty chilled ride initially, and then into a bit of a race lap at the end, which completely cooked my legs. But you can see here, everything's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. We'll dive into that. We see 189, 195. A little bit of separation there, but this is again a dual system up against a single-sided system. Scrolling down, 94 versus 100. I'm the one that's wonky. Left is low. Scrolling up here, looking at this, 89, 195. Left is low, but that is absolutely what we expect from a single-sided left versus a dual system. Again, I'm happy with that data. Into the harder effort through here. 281, 289. We creep down a little bit, and yeah, there's me being a little lazy on the left leg. Uh, slight little dropout through there. Again, I wasn't seeing that through anything else, so I'm just going to call that environmental. The Llama Lab has a lot going on. I try and make it nice and clean and clear for the data, but those things happen. So again, indoors looking good. Pulling up the cadence on this one because I haven't looked at the cadence from it yet and I had no issues with that at all. So we have 87.18, 87.43. Cadence is a solved problem with almost every single power meter out there. Rarely do I come across a power meter that is unable to do proper cadence. Onto an outdoor ride, and this is up against the in-peak single-sided Shimano crank. Now the in-peak crank, that was a bit of a journey, but the third or fourth iteration of the firmware was really, really good and is my baseline test for a single left-sided Shimano crank power meter. So this is what I've installed, the single left Shimano crank in-peak and the IQ squared single left. Jumping into this little data set here, 209, 209. Call it done right there. I was happy seeing those numbers. Actually, I switch off one of the units so I can't see the numbers. It cracks me if I'm looking at both power meters at the same time, but that's looking fantastic. Again, the back end of that ride, 192, 190.6, looking at within two watts with some stop starts through there. Call it done. Look at this short little effort here. Not a problem at all, 191, 191. Again, that's all good. And finally, into a hill ride with a few harder efforts. We'll jump in and have a look at uh, these two hill climbs through here with some coasting, 217, 218. You can see the IQ squared's a little bit spikier. That's about all I can really pull out of it though. Then into a shorter, harder effort through here. That's looking pretty good for a left only system to capture that into a sprint. Uh, it looks pretty jagged and things. There's no smoothing there, but 253, 255 for some stop starts. That's all looking pretty good to me. And diving into the last little section here, riding home, I think this is on a bike path. Uh, 251, 246, so a little bit of separation there, but you're just seeing a few of the, uh, I guess, instigating spikes from the IQ squared. Now it could also be the in-peak not reading high enough. It's hard to tell with single left versus single left from two different manufacturers with two different head units, but we try and keep everything the same. Probably the only nitpick, but overall, those numbers were absolutely brilliant as compared to, well, a few of the other power meters that I've been looking at lately. A quick look at the mean max power from that last ride there. Uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, just everything is nice and smooth. If anything is out, usually you'll see a line that's just continuously out the whole way around. Uh, there's a little bit of wonkiness there, probably what that's a few watts for the harder efforts, but coming in from what, 400 down, one for one, two peas in a pod. And finally, the overall stats from that hill loop ride. 189, 190, 261, 258, normalized, max power, uh, 1118, 1112 for the sprint. So look, call it done for accuracy. I was pretty impressed. Well, how about that then? I would have lost a number of bets had I been a betting man. Quite surprising with the numbers there. Now, putting aside all the delays, all the updates, all the comments, and all the things around IQ squared and the story behind it, this does show that they're able to deliver a power meter that does what it says. Can they though deliver that to everyone else? Well, time will tell. Can they deliver the same for the dual-sided road and the dual-sided mountain bike? Well, we don't know that either. And will the power meter last the test of time? Look, all questions we don't know until we see these in the hands of backers and see how things go out in the field.
I'm keen to see what they do with international distribution, allowing people to purchase in their own currencies and not have to deal with import taxes and duties and tariffs. That is an extra hurdle for people seeking a cheap power meter. Sometimes you get a nice surprise update in the mail or in your email saying that you owe your government a few hundred dollars for the imports. Next up is support and the scaling of support. This is their first power meter. This is the first product they've produced. They may have one or two people on support. If these power meters get very, very popular, support costs money. So all things that adds to the overall cost of a product. So fingers crossed they can keep the cheap price tag on this one for years to come. Now to reiterate what I've already mentioned earlier in this video, there is nothing special about the IQ squared power meter from a technical standpoint. There are other power meter pedals out there that are lighter, much easier to install, have support for oval rings, have support for cycling dynamics, have international distribution and support already solved, and where the product and the firmware have been out in the field for years and has been refined. However, you do pay a little bit more for those. Okay, some closing words from me on the IQ squared power meter pedal that I was supplied to test in the Llama lab. First up, what I didn't like. Well, number one, there was no cleats supplied. I had to supply my own cleats and the correct cleats, the ones I had on my shoes, didn't work. Uh, the pedal install process, look, it's clunky. If you've got a dual-sided system and you're having to do that both sides, not as easy as the other solutions out there. Uh, the pedals being 16 mil, not 15 mil, is also a hassle. You've got to use their tool or find another one. My pedal wrench didn't work. Uh, the weight was over spec and the plastic battery cap. I have questions around that. Now onto what I did like. Two main components, the accuracy and the price. And they're the two main things people will choose above all else when selecting their next power meter. So for now, like everyone else, I sit back, I wait, and I watch. I'm gonna look at all the posts by the backers who are going to be getting these pedals, putting them on their bike, and putting them through their own testing out in the field. So if you are a backer, let me know how you go with yours. Alrighty, as always, if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, and thanks for watching.